Welcome back to this video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a PL statement using Microsoft Excel. All we need to do is open a new sheet on Microsoft Excel. I'm going to row two and just going from B to H. I'm just going to merge and center those cells. And I'm going to put in something like profit and loss. And I'm writing with or typing with one hand, hence why it's a bit slow. Profit and loss statement. And then I'm going to make that bold and underline it. And then I'm going to do hyphen and then the business name. So for this video, I'll just put BPFS, it's the name of my business, BPFS Limited. Something like that, something nice and simple. Then I'm gonna do the same below, merge and center B to H in row three. And I'm going to put the date in this one. So it's June, it's the 16th of June today. So let's do our management accounts for May, for the previous month the month of May. So the 31st, 05, 2015. Or we could put May 2015. Now your profit and loss statement, the, uh, the clue to what the statement is, is in the title, just like a lot of the statements in accounting, it gives you a breakdown of your net profits, your gross profit, or your net loss or gross loss for a certain period. And as these are monthly management accounts, it will be for the previous month. I'm going to start, let's say here, B7, I'm going to put sales, make that bold. And then somewhere along here, let's put it in F. Let's put a pound sign and let's center that. So we have this pound sign, you can put a dollar sign or whatever your currency symbol is. Now we're going to list our sales. You may just have sales and enter the sales figure for the month, but you may want to break down sales for the month into different categories. You may have sales in the north, sales from the south, sales from the east west. You may have a couple of shops, shop A, shop B. You may sell different products. You may have sales product A, sales product B, etc. And for this video, let's do products because that's quite common. So let's just say sales product A. And then just below, I'll do sales product B. And then let's do a third sales product C. We will then have a total sales. And this figure is important, this total sales. We, there are some big figures on this report we want to stand out. So let's make our total sales bold and underline. And we can even use the space bar once we've underlined to make a nice line across the screen like that. If we go a bit further, then we have this line bringing us to the, the total. Now we will, need, we will need to enter our, our sales figures. I'm not gonna show you how to do that. If you've got accounting software, you can get it from that. If you're keeping some sort of bookkeeping spreadsheet, then you'll get your sales from that. Your sales will be recorded just through general bookkeeping and that's where you'll get the information from. So let's say we had 500 pound worth of sales of product A, 800 of B, and 350 of C. Now I'm going to make all of these figures 
centered and I'm also going to format sales and go to currency two decimal places and we don't need the symbol as it's titled with the symbol click OK I'm just going to change these slightly to make them more realistic so let's put 501 35 because they're not going to be dead on 800 350 799 50 351 50 okay something like that so our total sales to enter our total sales we can do it manually by hovering and highlighting over our sales and the figure will be given down here 1652.35 gives you the total of everything that's highlighted we can put a formula in we can put equals click on the cell plus the next cell plus the next cell enter and that will give us the figure also our next heading is going to be cost of sales Now your cost of sales is the direct expense related to selling the product. So not things like overheads, you know, power, rent, rates, fuel costs. They are generally not directly related to the sale of a product. If you're selling a product, the direct cost is the cost of the product to you. So a direct cost in buying and reselling the product so in cost of sales once again we can categorize this or just put it in one lump sum and I'm going to put it in one lump sum I could put cost of sales product A product B product C but I'm just gonna do one sum and because I'm going to do one sum let's underline this like so So let's put in one lump sum here and let's say it was 45287 just to figure off the top of my head. Now our next heading and important figure is our gross profit. Now your gross profit is different from your net your net profit. Your gross profit is your sales minus your cost of sales. So if you bought a product at a wholesale price of five pounds and sold it for ten pounds your gross profit would be five pounds it's the sale minus the cost of the sale your net profit which we'll come to later is your overall profit after all your expenses so even though you may have made five pound profit on a sale of an item you purchased it for five pounds and sold it for ten pounds so you made a five pound profit there are other expenses that will come off that profit such as you may have driven your car somewhere to sell the item or you may have had to package the item to sell it or sell some or pay some sort of fee to sell it you may also have electricity you may have a computer and, and other things that are involved in selling the item and after those expenses that will give you your net profit so the gross profit is an important figure so let's do gross profit it's underlined and in bold and we'll do lots of spaces again as this is an important figure that we want to highlight and our gross profit is simply the total cost of our sales so equals F13 minus the cost of sales enter so our gross profit is 1199 Dot four eight. Let's make that bold. Let's make our total sales bold also. Okay, our next heading is our expenses or overheads. And here we're going to have things like rent and power. perhaps motor expenses office expenses
and there will be lots of other expenses too. But for the purpose of this video, let's just keep things simple and short. So let's put these figures. So once again, we would get these figures from our accounts that we're keeping from our, our bookkeeping duties. Rent, let's say that was 250 for the month. Power, £15.50. Motor expenses, £35. Office expenses, say it's £78 for whatever reason. Okay, we will then have total expenses. Make that bold. And our total expenses is the total of all of our expenses. Once again, if we highlight that, it's 37937. Or we can do a formula. Let's do equals sum. Open a bracket. Highlight the cells. Close the bracket. Enter. So that's our total expenses. And then perhaps the most important figure of the statement is our net profit or net loss. So let's make it bold and underline it. And let's bring the line across. And our net profit is our gross profit minus our expenses. So let's go equals gross profit minus total expenses. So we have a net profit of 820.11. And that is our profit and loss statement for the month. Now you could have another column here. I've left room on purpose here as we may have a column for year to date or the financial year to date. So say our financial year started with the tax year in April, we would have a running total here of the profit for the year or the sales, cost of sales, overheads and net profit for the year to date. Whereas the first column be in the month. So you'd have figures in here or you could have figures in here that would reflect the profit or loss to date. And that's the profit and loss statement. In the next video, I will show you how to manually create the balance sheet. Thank you for watching.